Hi and welcome to the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment's television series Bridges, where we share programs, activities and opportunities. I am Tanisha Doughty and with me is Liam paris Boyne. This week we're coming to you from Gall Hill St. John Community Outdoor Gym. This is just one of five outdoor gyms launched this year by the National Sports Council to promote physical activity and good health among its citizens. We learn more about this initiative later and see how it impacts the communities in which they reside. This week, we're going to be taking a look at the Cutting Out Violence Barbering Project. This was a three-month practical program that saw 10 young persons trained in barbering skills. Let's take a look. We here at the ministry are in the midst of our anti-violence campaign and we, saw, we found it fit to label the project in such a way that it fits into what we're trying to achieve in that particular campaign that we have, which is the anti-violence campaign. So cutting out violence is literally what we are trying to do throughout the entire um, nation of Barbados. Um, but given that this is an initiative specifically for the St. Michael Southeast area, which is, it has a reputation for crime and violence, especially gun violence. And so we found it fitting to literally say, we're gonna cut out the violence. And this is through engaging the um, participants, the young participants in the, art of barbering basically and research has shown that once you engage the youth in activities which develop them as individuals, develop them as professionals, they tend to deviate from behaviours which are deemed um, to be criminal or violent activities and they just they just change basically and we're hoping that this is just the beginning at the ministry um, for us in going into communities and making a difference and that's what the Division of Youth Affairs is about, going out there making a difference in a playful way even if it's just wordplay. I have any message out there basically for everyone to see, specifically for our youth. It has a three phase process. The first phase was a one week workshop, which was full of life skills. So they were engaged in workshops, which um, had topics about customer service, um, emotional control, um, how to deal with their brand and their image and how that relates to not only themselves, but their business, as well as to Conflict resolution, basically, that was actually the first topic that we covered before we got too far into the training. They also looked at marketing as it relates to barbering. Um, they did business registration. We wanted to know that once they leave us here at the ministry, they're able to go there with the knowledge and tools necessary to conduct themselves in society as an individual and then conduct themselves properly as a business owner. Because we're hoping that when they leave us, they are able to either be an employee of someone and they go into the shop well aware of how to conduct themselves, as well as to be employers in the future, or even sole proprietors. Um, so regardless of the path they take after they leave us, we just wanted to know that they had the skills necessary to have a successful endeavor. And then phase two was the retrofitting of Paul Harris Barbershop. Um, we retrofitted his living room where he has two stations, um, to chairs, all the equipment that's necessary. And then the third phase, which began on the 17th of January, was the beginning of the practical aspect where the students are actually engaged in the skill itself of barbering. The lead tutor of the program was Mr. Paul Herwood. He is the owner and operator of Barber Cuts Barbershop, which is in the Pine community where the program was held. My name is Paul Herwood. I'm the owner of Barber Cuts Barbershop. Um, also one of the coordinators for the project called Note Violence and I am located in 48 Parkers of Field Point. In dealing with the coordinator Adrian Wiff, uh, we talked about it and we tried to come up with, you know, um, the right way to not only design the, the, the actual infrastructure but like how we can chart the course and she told me to do like a, a syllabus. So I had to go and scratch my brain and you know because I mean I talk to people I like to counsel people but I ain't a teacher, if you want to me, so, you know, so I had to kind of like apply myself, so I had to like sit down first and chart out how I'm going to do this, and because I didn't know what to expect, 
I didn't know who, you know, different different personalities. I didn't know who I would have who I would have to be dealing with, if you understand know I me. Mean? So that was I wasn't really so overwhelming, but it, 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 it had I had enough discipline to sit down and you know put things together and then in dealing with Adriana and then seeing what the ministry was offering. You know, it was a good job, it was a good relationship. So the barbershop is already in the community and you know we were trying to like teach the children like certain skills not only skills dealing with barbering but like you know personal development i am a strong believer in personal development especially for young people because they've got a lot of young people that don't know how to you know deal with like you know applying for jobs and dealing with people and you know like conflict and stuff like that so in a way i kind of look at it as something that like i could gel you know like you know, both, both things together, personal development and still to be able to learn a skill that even if they don't do it as a profession, it's still saying good to fall back on. From all reports, this was a fantastic learning opportunity for both males and females. The Community Development Department, we have 39 functioning community centers and resource centers throughout the island of Barbados. We are pleased to offer you the facilities in your communities. Certainly, we have made them more inviting. When you traverse, you know, throughout all of the island, you can see we have refurbished them. We have started ensuring that when you come to those centers that we've created a safe space where you can have your activities. We've done that with the installation of security systems. We've even started instituting new seating arrangements. So when persons come and they want to use our internet facilities, you have that space there. The Barbados National Youth Parliament is another youth platform for young people to have their voices heard and actively participate in youth-related issues. This program is facilitated under the Youth Development Program in the Division of Youth Affairs. Hi, my name is Julie Watson. I am a member of the Barbados National Youth Parliament. The Barbados National Youth Parliament was officially launched on June 18, 2014. This program provides a platform for young people to learn about politics, democracy, representation, and the parliamentary system of Barbados. The program is facilitated by the Youth Development Program of the Division of Youth Affairs in the Ministry of Youth, Sports, and Community Empowerment. This program exposes young people to a cadre of training programs that focuses on capacity building. How can you sign up one my acts? One, you can call the ministry at 535 3835. Two, you can access the online registration on our social media handle, DVYouth246. Three, you can contact your youth commissioner for your area if you're interested to be a part of the program. Shade Smith, Prime Minister, shared experience in the program. Hello everyone, my name is Shade Smith and I had the pleasure of serving as your youth Prime Minister for the year 2022 to 2023. This experience has been one that is ex was extremely phenomenal. I got the opportunity to meet persons all over Barbados and form long-lasting relationships with them. I initially joined Youth Parliament to have a deeper understanding of parliamentary procedure, use this as a stepping stone, probably to a career, to build confidence and also just to explore because as a young person, you, you just want to make sure that you are networking, um, and creating experiences. So that's why I initially joined Youth Parliament. After coming into the program, um, it opened my eyes to so many things. Um, I got to learn a lot about myself. Um, for example, I didn't really know that I had the skills to really take up like public speaking, um, to, to man a team. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that I really, really learned about myself being a part of this program. Um, I also would like to shout out and say thank you to the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment for really entrusting me with this role because this role is one that I really take seriously. Um, it is one that, you know, I say as one that you just have, is a big, it's a big team effort. 
so you are not so thinking about yourself but you're thinking about how best you can lead your team um, it's also caused you to do a lot of ob observing because you have to understand each person within your team you have to know their strength and their weaknesses and that is something that I would have learned throughout this time here because um, as in my role what I have to do is not only guide them in the, in the writing of our resolutions that we debate but I also am responsible for making sure that each person um, has a has a time slot has an area in which they will speak and to do that you have to really know each person's strength and weaknesses to say okay well this person can go first this person may fit in well in, in the middle um, so it really really gave me that 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 um experience to really like look on the outside and really look for person's traits like special traits that they may have it also caused me to have a lot of regional exposure as i got the opportunity to travel to trinidad and tobago last november to compete uh, well to be a part of the 11th commonwealth youth parliament for 15 years the cries of our people have fallen on deaf ears and we must ensure that that cry does not go forward, Madam Speaker. It pained me yesterday when I heard not one, not two, but three opposition members stood on point of orders to query the relevance of, of our member on this side when he was making his contribution that linked this bill to mental health, Madam Speaker. That experience is one that will stick with me forever. I met sisters and brothers from all over the region and we are still really really close till this day we have we all have a big group chat where we talk and we will meet monthly and talk about you know who where we are at now um, making sure that we keep motivating each other because this is all a big team effort um, if we really really want to integrate like the the region we have to make sure that you know it starts with us um, and that's something that we really notice on the first day that if we really want to see that regional integration um, if you want to see like the decrease of um, airfare within the reason it really really starts with us creating that bond and that relationship so that experience was one that I would definitely take for um, with me throughout my entire life because it caused me to step out of my comfort zone usually here when I'm here in Barbados I would normally be kind of shy away from you know rebutting or, or, or hitting on strong points um, but when I got there it was more uh, less about me and more about representing my country and representing the Ministry of the Youth so I knew that I had to step into I really step into my role and own it so it really caused me to you know um, push me, give me that edge to see or to execute on what others were seeing um, within me. So I just want to say thank you so much and I definitely do encourage any young boy, any young girl out there who's thinking about joining youth parliament to join youth parliament because you would gain skills um, such as confidence, um, public speaking, you would gain skills that will last you a lifetime and you will also create lasting relationships with people that will last your lifetime because networking is key and you never know who you may need. Um, so I do encourage you to join this program because this is it is a developmental program and I would say that I have really developed throughout this year. We invite young persons who are interested in the program to contact us at 535-3835 and get involved. Physical activity is very important. It helps to curb many non-communicable diseases. It keeps our weight down and assists in our general well-being. The launch of the community outdoor gyms by the National Sports Council helps to provide these benefits free of cost to the community. Four locations outside of the gymnasium. There is a gym at Bush Hall. There is a gym at Indian Ground. There is one at Haggett Hall and the last one is in St. John. Now we believe that there are persons who would love to be involved in gym activity but in some cases the cost is prohibitive and government we work as a collective and hence the reason why you're seeing Minister Brown here this morning from the Ministry of Health. It is hope, it is envisioned that this particular location will generate a lot of activities um, with budget, government is expected and we are planning to, through the National Sports Council, to move these community-based gyms across the country because we believe it can benefit persons um, all across the country. 
keep hearing that government is not doing what it's supposed to do in sports, but the onus is too on the national federations to step up, step up to the plate and ensure that those persons who are under their charge benefit from what is available through the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment. Are we making conscious decisions to eat healthier, to incorporate exercise in our day? Have we moved past the excuse that we cannot find the time to exercise? When most of us, no, all of us, can find at least 20 minutes per day. We find the time, some of us, for TikTok. We find the time for social media. We find the time for television programs. We can find the time to exercise. Hi, I'm Roberta Dowell, Marketing and Communications Officer here at the National Sports Council. We are obviously here at the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium. The National Sports Council has also created a state-of-the-art fitness center inside the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium that's open to registered national athletes and those young people registered in certified developmental programs. Now that fitness center is open from 8 a.m to 9 p.m. every day, excluding Saturdays and Sundays. Saturdays, our opening hours are 8 a.m. to 12 noon and closed on Sundays and bank holidays. Now, unfortunately, the fitness center is only open to those registered national athletes and staff. However, we have classes open to the members of the public every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And you can be sure to find information on those classes which include abs, glutes and legs classes, spin, uh, boot camp, flexibility and mobility class. And we also have a kiddies boot camp for those who want to come and work out at our outdoor gym or our fitness center in those classes and have their children participate in fun and supervised activities on the gym floor. For more information on our outdoor gyms and indoor facility, check out our Instagram and Facebook pages at NSC Barbados and our website www.nsc.gov.bb It's game on for the 2023 Barbados Road Tennis Open. Are you ready to face off and be the Barbados champion, king or queen of road tennis? Then get moving and register today. Forms are available at the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment, Sky Mall, Haggard Hall, St. Michael, the National Sports Council offices at Willie St. Michael, all community and resource centers and from executive members of the Barbados Road Tennis Association. Registration fee is $30 and must be paid at the National Sports Council between Monday and Friday from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. For further information, please call Sean Burke at 535-3835. Earlier, I headed east to the Princess Margaret Secondary School to find out about a special project which happened there. Let's take a look at what I found. The Youth Development Program's Bridge to the Future workshop has just concluded at the Princess Margaret Secondary School. And joining me for this segment is Ja'Kayla Reddock and Sadio Beckles. Ja'Kayla, beginning with you, what are your thoughts on the workshop? Um, I really enjoyed the workshop because it actually gave me a better understanding of what I could do after school with the different programs. And I really appreciate y'all coming today because I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do after school and today I actually know what I'm going to do. That's fantastic. And Sadio, what are your thoughts on the workshop? Well, um, to be honest, it seems like a fun workshop, you know, for the youth, you know, to get interactive, you know, learn different skills, new things that could really benefit them in the coming and uh, you know to really get people to come and join the workshop it is really seems like a place to put their mind to and you know wherever the world of work even if they leave in school and they got no um sort of like education for the second chance that I, I really think the workshop would be a um a good place for them to come and um, learn different things and um to benefit them and not to put you on the spot Sadio but what would you say was your favorite aspect of the workshop um, well, it could, I don't really have a favorite, but I could say, well, everything, because, you know, um, I enjoyed the presentation a lot, and it really gave me a basic understanding of what they have to offer and what you can join, and yeah, so everything is a good workshop that you can join and benefit from. And Shaquilla, which aspect did you like the most about the workshop, if there is any? Maybe the youth service presentation. I like that very much, because... I actually like the physical activities and stuff that they're doing in there because I'm a part of the Girl Guides at Princess Margaret and that, like, I don't know, like, it just 
makes me want to go and join it maybe and see what more, what's more to it. And my question to both of you at this time would be, if you had to make recommendations as to, you know, what more the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment can do, um, what would you say? Uh, well, I would um, advertise a lot more people in the community and people, because, you know, we got social media these days, we got WhatsApp, Instagram, you know, advertise it because, you know, there's a lot more people out there that don't have the employment and stuff like that. But I mean, this is a workshop that a lot of people can do because, you know, we have a lot of young persons getting involved in crime, violence on the street. And this, like, sitting at home being idle, but, you know, things getting hard now. You know, we just came from the pandemic. And, you know, if they can advertise this more, more people will be interested in the workshop and more people getting involved with the stuff that they have to offer um, within the ministry. And what about you, Shaquilla? What more do you think the Ministry of Youth Sports and Community Empowerment can do um, to raise, you know, awareness among the youth and, you know, to engage with youth more? Um, I think that they could, like, go into the communities that actually need it. Because there's some communities in Barbados, for example, the one that I live in, that the unemployment rate there is very high. There's violence and all these things. And I feel like if the people that are in the community have people come in to speak to them and showing them different things that they can do instead of being out there, that will actually benefit the people. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us for this segment of the Ministry of Youth Sports and Community Empowerment 30-minute program. I am Tamisha Dalti, and for this segment, we had joining me with Jaquela Radock and Sadio Beckles of the Princess Margaret Secondary School. We've just concluded the Youth Development Program's Bridge to the Future workshop. The Ministry of Youth, Sports and Community Empowerment is calling all young people in Barbados between the ages of 16 and 29 to participate in its National Youth Survey. The survey, which runs from April to October 2023, seeks to gain insight into the interests, aspirations and needs of Barbadian youth. Young people are encouraged to engage the youth commissioners when they visit and make their voices heard. For more information, call 535 3835 or email sharon.bishop at barbados.gov.bb. Last, we met the 2021 Outstanding Ambassadors, and as promised, here are the 2022 Outstanding Parish Ambassadors Chloe Collimore and Paul Cato. In first position, the most outstanding parish ambassadors for 2022. They are Paul Cato and Chloe Cullimore from the parish of St. Lucy. My name is Chloe Calamore. And my name is Paul Cato. And we are the 2022 Most Outstanding Parish Ambassadors. The night of the show first, you were, you were, it was a mixture of both excitement and nervousness at the same time. Because you were nervous to like know how you would place at the end of the show. But you were and still like nervous to perform in front of the whole crowd that had turned up to, you know, to view the show. But still you were excited to see like the... The results of all the hard work that you put up through the years, all the development in the speech, in the farm aware, in the costume, it was, it was exciting. It was exciting. Our project for the year was entrepreneurship, and we were tasked with educating the residents of St. Lucie on that topic. So we went into schools, primary schools like Ignatius Boyer, Sela Primary School, Half Moon Fort Primary School, and the St. Lucie Primary School. We also went into the St. Lucie Secondary School where, we're, where we put on a, a little pop-up pop -up shop, shop of the entrepreneurs that reside within that school. So that was very informative and entertaining as well because you see the talent that was produced from the school in their business segment or their business classes and they were able to really showcase what was done. We had our 
um, St. Lucie representative, the Honorable Peter Phillips, come and join and share some encouraging words with the students. And that was really amazing to see, like, you see the wealth of talent that St. Lucie has. And that was really, like, incredible as a resident myself and as a teacher. That was really awesome to see the students really becoming who they are through our parish project. Yes, and additionally to that, we didn't only go into the school, we looked for entrepreneurs within the parishes of St. Lucie as well. So we went into the community to ask and find you know, out who were entrepreneurs within the community so that we could give them an opportunity to showcase their entrepreneurship just to get the word out about the different types of entrepreneurs that we have within St. Lucie. I was also very shy and reserved and I knew that that's not who I wanted to be my whole life being that I am a teacher. Teachers are required to speak 24-7 from 9 in the morning to 3 in the evening so that, that, couldn't, that couldn't work for the rest of my life. So during this program we were required to speak at events whether it was in the PAC or the Community Independent Celebration Secretariat. You are required to speak. You have no choice but to talk. So for that experience I was able to push through and go out of my comfort zone and they put me in very uncomfortable situations where I didn't even know how to overcome it like speaking on TV, doing interviews, all of that stuff so that really helped me become the person that I am today speaking in front of you, impromptu stuff and <laughs> I can say that it really helped me develop through my, communi my communication, speaking to people and just being more outgoing I think the CICS program is important to Barbados because it doesn't only give you personal personal growth, it gives you a sense of pride in being a Barbados, a pride in not only your parish but a pride in the country as a whole. So throughout the program you learn about the country, you learn things about the ministers, you learn a lot about Barbados in itself and it gives you a pride of your country. So that's why I think that is important to be a part of your program. I think this program is important to Barbadians because you are able to develop pride in oneself, in one's country, and in one's parish. Going out there and speaking to people throughout the year that we have done it, they shared different stories and they told us along how they would have developed as individuals along the way, and they would have shared stories on how someone older than them or like a mentor would have helped them through. So in this program, you have a variety of mentors. You have mentors from each parish, so I believe that they will have a wealth of knowledge that they will be able to share with you and me, me and Paul, and that helped us to really become the individuals that we are today. That's why I think the program is essential to this, in this day and age. Do you want to know more about this program and how you can get involved? Well, give us a call at 535-3835 or send an email to cics at barbados.gov.bb. As always, we invite you to stay connected to us through our online locations. On Instagram, you can visit the Community Development Department at Comdev Barbados. You can also visit the Division of Youth Affairs at Div Youth 246. For the Sports Development Unit, it's sportsdevelopment.bb. The National Sports Council is at NSC Barbados. Community Independence Secretariat at Community Independence 246 and the Barbados Youth Advance Corps at Barbados Youth Advance. You can also stay connected on Facebook by visiting Community Development Department, Division of Youth Affairs, National Sports Council, the Community Independence Celebration Secretariat, or feel free to call us at 535-3835. Thank you so much for tuning into this program. Next week, we will bring you highlights from Project Protege and the Youth Entrepreneurship Schemes graduation.